Bill Powell is a senior writer at Newsweek and lived in Asia for 10 years, where he reported on the escalating tension between North Korea and the U.S. And Bill joins me now from Washington. Uh, Bill, the president described the current military solutions, as we said, as locked and loaded. What do you take from that? What do you think he means? I think um, that statement was fairly uh, straightforward, Stephanie. I think I think um, it says that that the the military plans are in place for a response to um, a North Korean attack, say, for example, on on Guam, as they have threatened to do. Um, the Pentagon uh, uh, under General Mattis has been working through methodically um, um, possible military responses um, to North Korea. Um, and I think the president's statement simply says that, that, that he is comfortable with, with uh, the, the plans that, that, that uh, Mattis and, and National Security mm -hmm. Council advisor McMaster have, have come up with. In your mind, is there a question of whether we're talking about a conventional military plan versus a potentially nuclear military plan, given what the president tweeted out earlier this week about modernizing the nuclear arsenal? Is that what we're talking about here? I don't, um, I, I'm not aware of, of, any, of any planning um, that uh, involved the use of, of nuclear weapons. I would be very surprised um, if, if that is uh, uh, on the table. I mm -hmm. believe, I, 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 I don't know this, I should say, but I, I, I believe um, the plans um, that the Pentagon has been working through uh, all involve um, conventional weaponry and not not nuclear weapons. You wrote an article actually called uh, What War with North Korea Looks Like If Military Action Is Taken. What could that look like, Bill? It, it could potentially be, be horrific. Um, uh, the, the biggest risk is that, is that the North has, has artillery batteries um, all up and down the, 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 demilit the, the DMZ, the demilitarized zone. Um, not far, uh, 50 miles, say, from, from the capital of, of South Korea, Seoul, which is one of the most vibrant, um, heavily populated cities in, in, in East Asia. Um, the, 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 the real risk to any military conflict is that, is that well, one of, the, one of the real risks is that there really is no preemptive scenario which guarantees that the North will not be able to get off a bunch of shots um, from from their artillery um, near the border, which means that um, the people in Seoul are at, are are in serious peril yeah. um, should it come to, to to military blows. We talk a lot about what would happen in that first hour, and I've heard from several analysts that we could be talking about hundreds of thousands of lives. But let's talk about that that concept of preemptive strike, which, again, reading between um, President Trump's tweets, do you think we're heading in that direction? Do you think do you see a scenario happening where there could be a U.S. preemptive strike? I think I think at this point we can't rule it out. I think I, th I think, however, um, the statement this morning. Um, um, should be sh should be read carefully. It it says should the, the the military plans are in place. Should Kim Jong Un act unwisely? That seems to me to be a very important part of the statement because it it seems um, to indicate that that if the U S were to use military force, it would be in response mm -hmm. to uh, presumably an attack. Um, from the north somewhere. So implicit in that is that it seems for the moment um, to not be talking about preemption, but rather a U.S. response to a North Korean action. I think, um, I think that statement um, was, was very wise um, in that it will, I think, reassure uh, allies like South Korea um, uh, and Japan um, that, that, that we are looking at at uh, response, responsive uh, military actions, and not at mm -hmm. the moment uh, preemption. 
how much should we be focusing on the tweets and the rhetoric that's going back and forth between Kim Jong Un and President Trump, as opposed to this reporting that we're hearing that there has been back channel diplomacy between North Korea and a senior U.S. diplomat? It's been happening for several months. Is it the behind the scenes diplomacy that really should ease public tensions um, that we're seeing play out on Twitter or on the world stage between these two world leaders? I think the fact that that there is um, diplomacy um, underway uh, is somewhat uh, reassuring. Um, I think from from President Trump's standpoint, I, I think he has taken on board um, the fact that that uh, uh, that the risk of a of a military confrontation um, with North Korea does uh, entail. Uh, the possibility of horrific casualties, um, and he doesn't uh, obviously want uh, want that. So, if there is a diplomatic path to easing past this this ratcheting up of tensions, um, I think the administration obviously is 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 wise to pursue it, and and is uh, pursuing that mm -hmm. uh, according to. To all, all reports. I want to take a different angle on this. In an interview with R. Anthony Mason earlier this week, former U.S. ambassador to the U.N. and North Korea expert Bill Richardson said the U.S. was caught off guard because of what he sees as an intelligence failure. Listen to what Richardson said. That worries me because we should have been on this long ago. We should consider finding ways to put more intelligence, overflights, more spies, because we were caught off guard. North Korea was way more advanced than our intelligence people told us. That's a massive intelligence failure that should never happen again. Bill, in all your reporting, are you also seeing this as a potential U.S. intelligence failure, its failure to see how quickly the, U, uh, the North could accelerate on its missile program? Um, I, I have to say I, I, I would differ, I think, with Ambassador Richardson um, uh, there. I think, I think the intelligence community has been um, focused and aware um, of, the, of, of the development, indeed the rapid development of of the North's uh, missile missile program, I am not uh, just because um, the Washington Post earlier this week reported um, that 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 the U.S. intelligence community now believes the North can fit uh, a miniaturized nuclear weapon on an ICBM doesn't mean that we just came to that conclusion. I think I think the intelligence community has has had information um, that suggests that that bit of it, for example. Um, uh, has been has been pretty clear for a while now. So I'm I'm a little bit less concerned um, that that this is a, a quote unquote massive intelligence failure. I mean North Korea is it's a tough it's a tough target for mm -hmm. the intel community. Obviously, um, um, I, I don't believe we have any uh, human uh, intelligence coming out of there, um, and uh, so but but and therefore we rely on. On signals intelligence, um, which 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 is pretty pretty good and mm -hmm. and, and pretty revealing. Um, so I, I I don't think um, that that we're necessarily surprised by the rapidity at which the North has has progressed uh, on both the, on the missile account and on the nuclear uh, weapon account. Okay, Bill Powell for us in Washington. Thank you, Bill. Thank you, Stephanie.